Welcome to Brooklyn Tide's Hot Stove, presented by Moneyline Media. I am joined here by the handsome Mitch. Mitch, how are you doing today? Good, good. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. So you are quite the popular person on social media, I noticed. You have like over 2,000 followers. You kicked butt in the Cy Young Award winner. Um three-time Cy Young Award win winner for the Brooklyn Tides. Uh, but let's get started and start with your beginning of your career. We'll go with how did you get into baseball? Uh, then we can talk a little bit about your high school career at Fort Hamilton and uh, all that good stuff. All right. Um, I think I started when I was three, four years old. Once I started walking, like my parents and brother – put a bat in my hand I started swinging it like it was nothing <laughs> and then from there on I made it into high school I struggled in high school not being able to find the strike zone and then something clicked junior year I just went off did really good senior year I became the uh I was named the all-star player a pitcher in uh, the New York Times uh not New York Times uh New York Post or one of the newspapers from New York. Awesome. And got into college, did my thing in college, and then I just kept working my way up. So you went to Concordia College. What uh, impacted your decision to go there? Uh, my summer team coach, he was the pitching coach there, oh, okay. and I enjoyed working with him. He was teaching me a lot about the game, and it just it rolled from there, and then Met some amazing people there. Had a lot of fun stories there. Awesome. Um, so I got to ask you a question. If you lost every single game at college, but you played one team every year and you killed them, what team would you want that to be? In college? Yeah. Um, in, in conference, it would be... Hmm, trying to think. Uh, it's usually like Wilmington we always played a good game against because they were always nationally ranked. So oh, we awesome. always tried to show up and beat them. Awesome. Um, but outside of conference, it would be probably uh, Southern New Hampshire. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So your first start as a Tide. First, I want to get into why did you join the Tides? What, what impacted your decision to come aboard the Brooklyn Tides? Well, we we're all from the neighborhood, and we grew up uh, playing together in the 68 Precinct Youth okay, Council yep. when we were younger kids through Paul Stingo and all that. And we played on the I think you played on the gold team. And then I went my own way doing college baseball and stuff, and then eventually came back. My, old, my middle brother, he was playing with them or something like that, and I just joined in with them. Awesome. So your first – game as a Tide, you throw a no-hitter. What was that yes. like for you? you put your put your <laughs> print on the team early, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. They were like, holy shit. And they just were, I was like, this is just, uh, you know, I like to beat everyone badly. Like you stated before, what team you want to beat. I just want to beat every team as badly as I can. So that Tom Brady, Black Mamba, White Mamba mentality. Yeah, so. Yes, for sure. Uh, so you put your stamp on the Tides really early, uh, becoming a huge uh, impact on the pitching mound for them. But I have to ask, I mean, I'm sure your teammates annoy you at some points. Anytime that you just want to, you know, wish that they were up to bat and you could either belt one of them or strike them out, which one would that be? Who 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 gets that title of, I, I want to strike them out so bad, or you want to either belt them so bad? Uh, it, it would be either probably Robbie or Stella. Because Stella just Steph. like Stella just likes getting beaten with pitches and land on the floor. And Robbie, you know, it's just everyone's just hating on Robbie for some reason. So Robbie does get brought <laughs> up a lot uh, on a couple of uh, not so nice, most likely twos. I don't get you know, it. He's he got, a super yeah. charming guy. You just got to yes. keep it flowing with the ties, though. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's roll ties. <laughs> Well, you bring up the Tides. You kind of stepped into a little hot water with the Tides over the 2019 summer. You might have pitched for a, a rival team called the Brothers. Yes, yes. yes I and did. I heard that that was not uh, liked <laughs> by many of your 
uh, teammates. Well, yeah. Why did you pitch for them? I was invited to a tournament and I enjoyed playing. There was no season going on for the Tide, so I went down there with them and we did our thing in Arizona. It was a good experience. Who gave you the hardest time when you came back? Uh, definitely Jerry. Jerry, Jerry and Robbie. Jerry is very uh, loyal. He he he, he definitely tie, bleeds tides. Yeah, yeah. If if you give, were given that opportunity again, would you make the same decision? As long as there's no tie games, yeah. <laughs> awesome. You, how was Arizona? Was it nice? Where'd you guys uh, pitch? At the um, Anaheim Angels Complex. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I get great, it. Great group of people. I love the game just as much as the Tides. So it's like when when we play against each other now when I'm on the Tides and Staten Island, it's just like a great group of at least 20 people on a field playing and playing their heart out because they love playing the game. It's like I like to surround myself with people who love the game. Yes. Uh, you have the lowest ERA in Tides history. How, how do you continue to prepare and keep yourself going each season um, and, and keeping that low ERA? Because it's it's much harder to keep it than it is to get there. So how, how do you keep that low ERA going? The whole the whole phrase goes down to throw gas and eat ass. <laughs> throw gas and eat ass. Now that could be a slogan. Now that could yeah. be a, a presidential slogan we got. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, how do you prepare in the off season? I don't think, but you, you seem like someone who plays a lot. Is there any off-season for you with baseball? Yeah, from, I guess, November to February. Okay. I just go to the gym every day as much as I can and then just get back into it. You This summer, you're going to pitch in Germany. Yes. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Germany? It's been a wild experience, and it's been an amazing experience, like playing baseball in Europe. It's a whole different um, composure of the game because the fans are – they're just passionate throughout, like, the whole entire game. It's not like really? they show up and they'll be like, all right, we'll see, like, this part of the game or that part. It's like from the first inning to the last inning to the game's over. It's like they're locked in and watching the game. It's just a completely different game. Is it also, like, on the field, is it different for you? Is there some aspects of that game that might be, like, at a higher level than, say, here in the United States or or biggest difference for you? It's just – it's baseball. It's just the game moves a little quicker or the, the hitters get a little smarter, so you have to outsmart them. It's like a game of chess you're always playing. You're trying to figure out who who can hit where, what situations or what. It's, it's a whole strategy that changes, and it just gets more and more challenging. Who are you most like like looking forward to going up against in Germany? Do you have someone that you know that you're you're excited to strike out or just everyone? Yeah. Every person I don't really like look at the person who's hitting. I just focus on me, the catcher, and making sure the umpire makes all the calls. And that's it. Who would be your dream person to catch your game like uh, a game for you? Like any MLB player, any MLB catcher that would be a dream for you. To, to pitch to, like? I'd say uh, Yadier Molina. Okay. He's, a, awesome. he's a goat. He's a, any batter that you would want to p- go against? Ooh, ooh, sounds, uh, hmm. Does it have to be, like, active or? No, it could be uh, passed. Definitely Barry Bonds. Okay. <laughs> Juiced up days or pre-juiced up days? Both. Both. <laughs> Both. And uh, Tony Gwynn. Tony. Okay. Too great. Are you uh, – who do you root for in, in baseball? Who do I root for? Uh, it's usually the Mets. Okay. But I've been liking Boston right now. Okay, you're into Boston. Usually right Boston, Boston and Mets because uh, we're against the Yankees. <laughs> so when you're not playing baseball, you do grounds crew for the uh, New York Red Bull. What's that like for you? Uh. A lot of grass, cutting grass, painting lines, taking care of the field, taking care of the whole place, you know, just doing ground crew stuff, having fun, enjoying being outdoors and doing labor work. 
if you were doing that, what would be, and, and no baseball, just say no baseball in your life, what would be your dream job? I don't know. I like trying new things all the time. I'm very good at analyzing things, so I'll probably get into something with analysts or I've been messing around with the stock market now, seeing that, see what's up with that. You know. Do- Dogecoin? Do- Dogecoin? <laughs> uh, everything's to the moon right now. Yeah, everything's to the moon. I like it. Um, we talked with a bunch of guys about their uh, not-so-happiness with the, the Tides front office. Do you have any beef with the Tides front office right now? I don't think so. Well, right. I, am I supposed to have any? No, no, you're not. Just, you know, we, we, we try to air it out here. We try to do our best to get down to the nitty gritty. Yes, yeah. I'm usually the guy that just shows up, has fun, you know, Yeah. do my thing, and then go be myself and have yeah. fun. Uh, favorite, do you guys go out, like, where was your favorite place to go out after the games? Nah, I don't really go out after the games because I usually try to recover. Okay. But I don't know. We we sometimes do a Bay Ridge stroll, having fun, you know. Yeah, Bay Ridge stroll is yep. always great. <laughs> Wandering awesome. to see wherever wherever we end up, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that hasn't been able to happen for at least a year now. Yep. How and how have you been? How has trading been different for you during COVID? Anything super changed for you? Nah, I just gotta wear the mask in the gym, and that's it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Or the face cover. Who would be out of all the the tides? If you could pick one gym buddy, who would be the best gym buddy? Oh, I usually see Robbie at the gym all the time at uh the gym we go to. So I definitely have to pick Robbie. Robbie, yep. Yeah. Who would be your least? I I don't I do not want to be at the gym with them. Oh, uh, hmm. I think Ukes. You know. <laughs> Oh, Everyone's been hitting on Ukes. You know, Ukes, Ukes got to – I don't know if he's going to either be sitting there drinking a, a, a protein shake or a milkshake. <laughs> he did uh, – when we did the interview with him, he looked very jacked. He yeah. Was, he was – and he made sure he wore a tank top just for that, that occasion. Yep, yep. Um, what has been your favorite memory as a Brooklyn Tide? There's many. There's a lot of memories, but uh, I think the one that really is sticking with me the most is uh, the Santo Memorial Games that we have. It just it, it hits different, you know. He's he had an impact on everyone. Every every person you met, he just just brought life to people, no matter what. Uh, we were very sorry to hear about uh, about his passing, and uh, our prayers are continuing to be with the Tides yes, family you. as you go through it. Uh, so you are a three-time Tides Cy Young Award winner. This time you won by a, a handsome amount. Yeah, how much was it? Did they have? It was it was a it was double digits. I know. Yeah, I heard I was breaking records. You did break some records. Well, definitely. You did, you did break some records. Um, and it's funny because you also won MVP, right? You also completely, yes, MVP, yes. I feel like you won. Um, people say that Robbie has the most groupies, but obviously it's you if you're winning all these awards. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think you, you uh, so many people voted for you? Uh, because I just, you know, I got the good fan base. They see my passion for the sport. I share it all the time on social media and they see that I'm I'm there grinding it out, showing my heart and then I'm there to help whenever a little kid or whatever person needs help in the sport and I'm there to help them. Would you, if you had to pick, so you say you're a manager, if you had to pick your, your uh, first coach that you hire, who on the ties, who are you picking? Who am I picking? Um, I'd have to either go with uh, Stella or JP. Stella or JP. Because okay. I need JP for hitting and Stella for hitting and fielding. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Uh, we, I talked about this last time with Robbie and with, I believe, Dimitri as well. I know that you're the pitcher, but if you had to make a Tides lineup, a, a batting lineup, how do you think it should go? Ooh. Um... 
Let's see who beat Weed Off. I'm trying to think. I think I'd have Davis lead off, then Robbie at second. Um, who'd be batting third? I'm trying to think of the lineup. Um, the Stark brothers batting three and four. Okay. And then fifth would be Ukes. Six would be Nate. Okay. Seventh would be Stella. Eight would be. I think you'd be the first baseman, Will Turber, or whoever's playing first that day. Okay. And then ninth would be uh, hmm. I'm trying to think. Probably J D. J D. Okay. Awesome. That's a good it's a good group. Yep. Um you're unfortunately because you will be Fortunately, you will be in Germany. Unfortunately for the Tides, you will not be with them this summer. What are you going to miss most? The Tides family. You know, the, the gatherings, the, the Jerry talks, the, st the, sting of, <laughs> the sting of commentary. You know, every single, each individual player has their own personality. So you, like, you literally hang out with a different person. You'd be a whole completely different, watching a completely different game while watching it with them or playing with them. So we play this game with, with all of the wonderful tides that come on. It's most likely to. I'm sure that you've heard about it. Um, I'll start with uh, who is most likely to run after the ice cream truck? <laughs> um, we would have to be fighting between um, Yuke's and Jerry and see who, who, who would trip who on the way to the ice cream truck. Okay, all right. You bring up uh, tripping and all that stuff. I got to go. Who would be a UFC champion? Who would be most likely be like a UFC champion? Ooh. I think Dave. 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 Would be a, okay. Yeah. Tough guy. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, and now I got to bring up who has the most groupies? I'd say Robbie. Robbie. Everyone loves pop, Robbie. Pop, pop, I I get it. Popular answer. Yep. That's a very popular <laughs> answer. Um, who is most likely to get ejected during the game? Ooh. Jerry, on, on given days, he, he would definitely want to get ejected. Sometimes yeah. Stella. Me, I get close to, you know. Really? Off, but uh, I definitely go with Jerry on days. You seem like such a cool head. Like, I, a lot of those guys I could see going off on the, the – from the limited time that I've spoken to them, going off on the umpire. You are not one. You you seem like you have a very cool, calm head. Yeah, I try to. That's usually my thing. But, like, when it happens throughout the game, you're competitive and the game gets really close. It's like you just – you just sometimes just, like, lose it and you're like yeah. – everything comes out. It's that kid, it's that Mamba mentality. Yep. <laughs> Who has the best style? Um, definitely not me because I show up in flip flops and shorts to the okay. game. <laughs> I would definitely say uh, Tony. Tony, okay. And who uh, uh, do you, you would say you have the worst style then? Yeah, probably since I wear flip flops to the game, no matter what temperature it's out. Gotcha. Who is most likely to be famous? Um, let's see. Let's see. Who who were the the top nominees for? Well, famous? I think this is this is actually a new one. So sorry, I started that with you, but I I would say I know that Robbie's nickname was Hollywood. Yeah. So I feel he gets, and a lot of people feel bad because they say Robbie's name a lot. Don't a lot of people say his name a lot. I guess he just, he's very popular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, who has the best swing? The best swing? Yeah. Um, I'd definitely say uh, Stella. Stella's got a smooth swing. Always uh, focused on a swing, yet making it smooth. Okay. Who is most likely to change teams without telling anyone? 
Well, we already seen that. Who yep. Did it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So unfortunately, is that person? Yeah, but not a person when because before that happened, not a person that anyone brought up. All right. Uh, who would change still. teams without saying anything? Huh. Mm, I don't know. I don't think anyone would. As well as just all loyal to the Tides family. Yeah. All right. Who would you most let date if you do have a sister, if not a fake sister? Who would you most let date your sister if you had one or if you have one? Oh, geez. Definitely got to keep everyone away from the the, 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 the team. <laughs> Never let them know. But uh, probably Will Turbot, you know. Okay, you let Will date. Okay. Yeah. Good guy. Good guy. Definitely uh, not Robbie. <laughs> I was going to say, and the least likely, it, that's no surprise, he is by far the most popular for this, yeah. this answer. Uh, who would eat a whole bag of sunflower seeds on the bench? Hmm. It's usually between me and Paul. You and Paul. <laughs> Yeah, we get seeds, and I just we just be sitting there when I'm not pitching. I'll just be eating seeds, and he'd be eating seeds. Who is the most fun to go out with? Uh, definitely experienced a, a fun time with Will. Will, Will and Ty's, uh Robbie's always up to something, doing something fun. Okay. Who would most likely pay the tab at the end of the night? Oh. Huh. Who would get left the tab? It would probably be uh, definitely Jerry getting left the tab. Who, who, who would hightail it out of there Ooh. to not have to pay? Who who would avoid paying? I definitely got to say Robbie. You know, Robbie's Robbie's the number one pick right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, who would most likely marry a princess? Uh, a princess. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Ukes, because he's just that that Hulk legend that just Wait. gets beef for being fat, but he's just a a Hulk of a person. God, God yeah, he is the Hulk. <laughs> um, who is most likely to um? Move to Alaska and never talk to anyone again. Who's a, who's most likely to become like a hermit and you never hear from them again? Ooh. I think I could do it, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> As I just disappeared to Germany and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I still keep in touch with them. Uh, uh, who would go to Alaska? Possibly Robbie. Because okay. the, the, the female population is higher there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, who <laughs> is most likely to um, make their date pay uh, at the end of the meal? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think we, depending on how the date goes, I think a lot of guys would be like, you're paying as well. <laughs> Okay, okay. Nothing wrong with that. But most likely, it'd definitely be Robbie. (laughs) Who would make the best football player? Ooh. Hmm. I think Jerry. Jerry would be a a solid line guy that, that protects you. Gotcha, gotcha. Who would make the best MLB manager? Hmm. Let's see. I'd have to go with either Jerry or Stella. Okay. Both both carry each other. He's like the captain of the field. Jerry's the captain of the whole team. Gotcha. Both both leaders. If you started a company, who would you most like? Like, who would you want to be your CEO of the company? Who would not be my CEO? Uh, definitely Dave. Dave, okay. Uh, who is 
most likely to become president? Most likely to become president. Uh, who would that be? Hmm. Who, who usually gets the president nominee? Um, Stella gets it, I think. I feel like I hear Stella's name with it a lot. Um, maybe JP? I feel like JP gets named a little bit here, too. Uh, I think JP could do it good. I could see that. I could see that. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about the your your competition, the other uh, teams in the mid league, the mid uh, in your league. Uh, Butchie's Heat. Jerry got a little bit of heat with Butchie's Heat for calling them the bad Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree with Jerry's term that they are the bad Red Sox? I think they're just really competitive and. I wouldn't say they're the bad Red Sox, but they're just really competitive. The Red Sox, you know, they just fight everyone that they can see. That's true. That's true. Who would you consider the Tide's biggest rivals? Biggest rivals would be the Heat or probably the Brothers. The Brothers that they, they, they you pitched for. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why I got so much beef for it. Who's most likely to... Get in trouble for missing a game. Hmm. Definitely Jerry. Was just give Jerry all the shit for him missing a game. Who misses the most games? Who misses the most games? Uh, probably me, since You're... I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back, what are you most looking forward to with the team? To play with them every game that they have and hang out with them all the time whenever I can. Awesome. What are you going to miss most about home when you're in Germany? Like, what what food place are you going to miss most? Because I know I, I'm a Bay Ridge girl. I know Bay Ridge got awesome food. What place are you going to be like, I'm going to miss that when I'm in Germany? Uh, the pizza. The pizza? Any particular pizza? Nah, just any pizzeria here. It's just, it's different than in Germany. Yeah, I, I could imagine. Uh, what are you most looking forward to in Germany? Oh, and the, the barbecue food. Barbecue. They don't okay. really have barbecue food over there. Gotcha. Uh, what are you most looking forward to in Germany? Uh, winning a championship there and getting to see the, the cities. So where, where are you staying when you get there? Um, it's an hour north of Munich. Okay. Have you ever been to Germany before or is this like... Yeah, yeah. I've been there two two times already. Two summers. Oh, so you, it, okay, you did the two summers? Yeah. D I have a question because I checked out your Instagram beforehand because I do my research. Uh, do you play for the Irish national team? Is that what it is? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Well, I will be rooting for you as an Irish person myself. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be playing in, uh, I think, Slovakia. Okay. Uh, what's it like playing playing as an Irish brother? And how, how, how awesome is it to play with the uh, Irish team and kind of have a country on your back? It's an amazing feeling. It's the the wearing the country in your front of your shirt. It's just like a completely different feeling because you get to represent where your family grew up and all that stuff, and you get to express where you've come from and how far you've come, and show that you're proud to be a part of this. Awesome. Well, Mitch, thank you so much for coming on the show. We can't wait to have you back. I'm sure we will before the start of the season and hopefully before you go to Germany. Uh, wishing yes. you the best luck over there and, and we'll be rooting for you here. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on, Mitch. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. That was Mitch Hiller. He is great. He was with the Tides on the team Ireland. Uh, we're excited to see what comes of him. That's episode nine of Brooklyn Tides. We will be back with more next week. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs>